Today is December 2nd, and the Yankees are standing still. They're not making any moves, so we are talking about whatever you guys want to talk about. It's the voicemail app. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Recaps galore for weekly awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Check this out, Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Yanks, the first December episode of 2019, the last month of 2019, the first episode of the last month of 2019. Glory be, we have made it. My name's John Boy. I'm coming to you from New York City, right next to Yankee Stadium. And Jake is coming to you from Denver, so far away. Doesn't they don't even have bagels over there or baseball? Jake, how you doing? Hallelujah. 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 Sorry, it's just it's the first and the last of so many things. It just feels <laughs> ceremonial. Yeah, everything's ceremonial. Point. Everything's a thing. Episode 365 of Talking Yanks. So if you want yeah, claps. So if you want, you stop listening now to Talking Yanks, and then you don't listen to an episode for 2020, and then because it's a leap year, so there's 366 days. Mm-hmm. But in 2021, if you just stopped listening to Talking Yanks now, you could listen to an episode every day. So I don't know if that's a good business model or what, but... That sounds miserable. Well, this episode will be forever known as the yoo episode, so just let it be known. I'm drinking yoo out of a can. I mean, you don't know how wrong that is, because you have the second most impressive drink involved in the show right now. What are you drinking? I can hear it. Ow, hurting my ears. Much. What are you, drinking a Moscow Mule? <laughs> yeah, my mid my mid afternoon meal to get me through the day. Uh, no, I have some pre workout lined up. I'm gonna start drinking at mid episode because I need to go to the gym after this because I put on eight pounds last week. So, did you measure yourself before Thanksgiving and then after? I I float between like 180 and 183, and I'm at a hard 189 right now. So, and that's not good for my height. If there's any doctors listening, that's like one of those. You do the BMI charts, and it's like, oh, high risk of death. So, I weigh way more than you, and I'm the same height as you. Well, yeah. Okay. Just Ours like goes to different areas. Okay. Where's yours go to? Belly. <laughs> All right, we're doing voicemail apps. Thank you to everyone who has been listening and continues to listen and calls in. And thank you. Big shout out to our patrons. This episode is brought to you by Yaakov Chanan Mendel Begelstein, Katie Kelly, William Goodwin, Brian Rosario, Kimberly Burglar. Tough to live up to that. Nathan Kremble, Destiny Hallenbeck, Thomas Harris, Michael Mogren, Wavy, is that Wavy Gravy? And Scott Titmus. Thank you guys very much for being our most recent Patreons or re-upping or whatever you did to get your name at the top of the list. Either you just signed up or you re-up. Patreon.com slash Talking Yanks. Get you access to the live chat. We got Jason and Carl in here and some others right now. And uh, some other stuff. Get get, uh, some other stuff. Jake, are you ready to do voicemails? Tell me about the other stuff you've been talking about. Well, you get a jersey, but I'm so behind on the jersey raffles because I've been so busy, so I feel bad even mentioning yeah. them. I'm excited for voicemails. Uh, voicemails are fun. You and I talk in Yanks, like I mentioned, episode 365. I think I think we, we really rip T.Y. And it's been a little quiet, so I'm excited to hear what the voicemails are. Um, hey, and I hey, hope I there's a mention... This. 
I hope there's a mention of Mike Moustakis because he just got signed. Last last episode, we told people that according to people we've talked to, the Yankees were shopping Andujar pretty hard, and I think that the rumor mill has, has kind of backed that up. Like the Rangers sound interested. There's a lot going on with Andujar trade. Um, um, I don't think like we don't know that the Yankees are definitely going to do it. We just know that they are shopping him currently. Yeah, I think the big rumor was for Jose Leclerc, the Rangers reliever. Um, it's been fun watching Twitter go to Middle Earth on that battle just because they need Yankees Twitter needs something to talk about. So they're like, you do that. Tra-. I've seen everything from you do that trade in a heartbeat. Andujar doesn't have a position to. Um, I like this one a lot. Someone was like, <laughs> so you're telling me the Yanks wouldn't trade Andujar for Garrett Cole, but they're going to trade him for a reliever. Uh, I thought that was kind of a funny way to look at it. Uh, and then I and then I saw people like just tagging on Hap to the trade. They're like, well, if we can move Anduhar with Hap, I'm in. And it's like, well, now we're we're expanding the zone a little bit here. So uh, it's prime off season. Good good for baseball. A lot of teams are getting involved. The Yankees have to do something soon. Soon they do. All right, let's go right into the voicemails. Hey boys, it's Steve Call from Philly. Um, question for you guys today is um when do you think that the yankees whole mindset of um willing to pay the top guy you know whatever he wanted change when when and why do you think that mindset of yeah you know having their guy and going out and getting them changed um you know i could just remember growing up um basically steinbrenner going having his guy and paying whatever he wanted to get him um just curious as to you know when that when that change and and why that mindset may have shifted all right boys appreciate it keep going love y'all thanks steve i think that mindset changed with the guy we like to call jacoby ellsbury uh brian mccann beltron they tried to do the 2009 sabathia Teixeira, burnett swisher with beltron mccann and ellsbury after they got done with that putrid 2013 season and uh like it all sucks man just throwing money in these big contracts you need a couple of them right you need like one or two you can't just do it every year the yankees have had no depth like think about that 2013 season when everyone got hurt now compare it to the 2019 season when everyone got hurt look at the depth in the lineups the yankees got much smarter cashman I mean, Cashman got the show in his hands without having being forced to make decisions. And he was like, can we be a little smart now? And the luxury cap penalties got tougher. So the Yankees didn't want to have to deal with the, uh, you know, every team kind of saw the luxury tax penalties get tougher and changed accordingly. So it's a couple things, but yes, I wish the Yankees still threw money at people. I hope they throw whatever at Cole. I'd be a fan of that. But the way they were doing things before is not sustainable. You need a mixture. You need depth. You need young guys. And I think they got, like, Cashman was like, hey, can we be a little smarter about this? Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I do my spoiled Yankee rat rant probably once a month. And it'll be interesting. I, I know this offseason, you know I've gotten roped in a little bit because we had money come off the books and guys like, uh, Didi, CC, Dellen, a couple others, that if you look at the holes on this team right now, I mean, there's there's no glaring holes. It's not we we need to sign an impact player at first base or something like that. Like, sure, something like that would be pretty nice, but it, it's easily not a need for this team. And why wouldn't you go in with something like Voight and Ford? Or hell, I'll start Josh Bell rumors if I want. But the Yankees still bring on... Dudes, I mean, Giancarlo Stanton, uh, a lot of fans have pointed out, is making a lot of money. That was essentially a free agent signing. When we signed Tanaka, I mean, there's not a lot of teams that have paid, what was it, seven years, $155 million for a starting pitcher? Uh, so, like, that was a big signing. You just can't expect it every year. They're, like, like you were saying, the way the rules are set up now, every team, the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, are getting under this salary cap because it's just bad business not to. So, yeah, if you want to be out there and say, this isn't the old Yankees, absolutely, you're right. Um, 
and and it's because things are changing. That being said, like I I've been on towards <laughs> I won't say I'm in the front line of the bandwagon for Kohler Strasburg because there's a way we could do that off season without them, but at the same time I I've just become so enamored with there's not any holes on this team. We now have the money. Money came off the books. We're trying not to pay Ellsbury, by the way, that we could fit a Cole or a Strasburg, and that is the the hole on this team. So uh, we'll see how this offseason plays out. Um, but I don't know. It's not like we we haven't added a, a big-time player since CC Sabathia, but like it, it's the, the game is just differently now. It's not coming down to the Yankees or L.A. or one other team for these big free agents. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. I think it's the changing of the times. And also, I think, you know, you just have to balance is key. And uh, you, you give me a couple guys like you're saying they've done it, but I, I'll take Cole. But just throwing money at every free agent with a long term deal. That's how you get yourself stuck in like that 2013, 2012 season. Right. Like after after what we saw last year, I mean, if if Machado or Bryce Harper on were on this team right now, what would we be saying? Like we could have Talkman out there for not for free, but for the minimum doing it. Um Gio or Shella, so I don't know. Hopefully there's a method to the madness. Next. This is Chris from Antonio, Yankees underscore twenty eighth on Twitter. Uh first off you're still killing it, and it's amazing to watch. I love you guys, and I think it's just a, it's just awesome. Um, except for that guy Jake, I don't know what the hell he's writing and coattails and all that other shit. Anyway, hey, um, why does Luke get so much hate from Yankees Twitter? I mean, Jesus, he was the best hitter in baseball over like a six month split season. Uh, he had our highest OBP before he got hurt. Yeah, he's not Golden Glove, but he's serviceable at first, and he's just a stud. Why does everyone hate him? He is our first baseman. Anyway, love you guys. Jake, you don't suck. I love you too. Bye. I thought he was talking about producer Luke, John Boy Media at first, not Luke Voigt. Uh, Luke Voigt gets a lot of hate. <sighs> Question I mark. Think, I don't know if it's hate. I I think he's he's not a standout glove at first base. I mean, average is kind of a compliment for what he does at first base. Um, I think baseball is also what have you done for me lately? And Luke Voigt's last twenty four games, or however you want to chop it up, when he came back from injury for the Yankees, he was not the same Luke Voigt, and that's what people have in their mouth. Along with Mike Ford coming out and doing some dynamite stuff down the stretch. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's hate, but I also think right now, if and this is what makes it ridiculous, if you look at the Yankees lineup and say you want to sign a hitter, the, the Yankees hitters suck during the playoffs, we need a hitter, the position you look at is first base. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's DJ Glaber, uh, Gio Andujar, um, Gary's behind the plate. I mean, we've got Judge Stanton, uh, Talkman, uh, Hicks, he's hurt. Uh, we think Gardy's coming back. Like, the big finger point is first base because people just have this image of that first baseman Mahler that has to be in the middle of our lineup, Tino Martinez, um, someone like that. And I don't know, man. Like, it, Luke Voigt has been really good, but I, I think if you're looking for a place in the lineup where you'd be looking for an upgrade... It, it kind of is first base, but it, it's still reaching. Could you put DJ at first and then put someone like get someone to play second, like Villar? But why would you do that? Like Voigt can be very good when healthy. Yeah, and that's I I think that turns into like are are we wasting DJ Lemayhew? He's a Gold Glove second baseman, crazy good contact hitter who like his his value is slightly more at second base when you think you could get more production at first base. So. Um, I, I don't know. It's, uh, Luke voice kind of left a bad taste in people's mouth. So I'm, I tweeted this the other day. I'm interested to see what Cashman and Booney say this off season concerning first base. Like, are they going to say first base is a competition? Are they going to say it's voice, but Mike Ford showed us a lot last year. I'm interested to hear their verbiage. I think they'll say like it's voice to lose. And that's that's what I'm I'm expecting, but I could also see them saying like 
it's a competition. Ford's numbers were kind of bonkers to end last year. Yeah. Eh, we'll see. Competition's good, but I'm, I just want a first baseman, man. <laughs> yeah, like, and that's... Right? Uh, like, if Voight can just be good for the full season, that'd be amazing. Yeah, and I, I think I stole this from someone on Twitter, and I, I just mentioned it briefly, but Josh Bell for Pittsburgh, a little switch hitting power first baseman. You know, we'll we'll send you Voight, Andujar, a couple Prospies. Give us Josh Bell. Boom. Problem solved. Boom. Problem solved. Uh, next voicemail. That was it's Bubak. Uh, just a fun question here for you in the off season. Uh, which which guys from the I guess what what guys from this year's team uh, are Body wash guys, which guys say, you know, fuck body wash, we only do bars of soap. And who are the guys that are doing the, the three-in-one shampoo body wash or two-in-one shampoo body wash uh, combos? Okay. Peace, fellas. Bubak with a great question. It's actually yeah. kind of a fun question. Who... <laughs> Who on the team is a body wash guy and who is a soap guy? Uh, Jake and I are both bar soap guys. I know that because we lived together for a while. Fact. I am on a, a. I have a hard stance that if you use body wash and you don't have a loofah or a scrubber, you're not a clean person. You're just kind of yeah. smell nice, but you're oily and dirty. If I wash my natural skin... With body wash, I mean, I'm coming out slimier than when I went in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you use yeah. just body wash and you're, you're not, if you use a loofah, it works because you're actually like scrubbing your skin a little bit. But if you're just using your hands and body wash, you're a nice smelling gross person. So let's, let's check some obvious boxes first. Yeah. Well, process of elimination. DJ LeMayhew uses a five in one. Yeah. He, he he might be using like, oh he dude. doesn't care he's he's bar soap only like he does bar soap on his hair Ooh, bar soap in the hair maybe yeah yeah i think he's bar soap in the hair and just everywhere he's only using one item yes yeah okay no i think that like glaber he's so young he's a bar soap and a body wash guy he just wants to smell real good Oh, he's doubling down. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I was... Uh, a lot of the Latin guys are swagger dudes. Like, Gio likes doing up the hair and stuff. Uh, Chapman swag. He's got. He's made up his own hashtag for that. Chapman's like, body wash. Oh, obviously. And, like, the coolest, hippest yes. body wash. He doesn't like it. Like, it gives him a rash, but he still uses it because he heard it's <laughs> awesome. It's got gold flakes in it. Yes. Um. Ooh, Talkman's a wild card. Hot, a lot, a football locker room guy. Seems like body wash vibe. Yeah, I might go bar soap. There. You know what? I'm. Know. I don't have a good gauge on this. To be honest with you, it's interesting. We might. Uh, we might have to bring this question to the guys. Yeah. Um, okay. And I wonder how much of it is dictated. Oh, by you the know what DJ Lemayu uses. Whatever's like, in the shower. Dead raccoon. Yeah. Like he's not bringing anything in there with him. He no. looks at the walls and sees what they got and then just uses something. Yeah. He's only using one. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Miller in the chat said Bravik Valera puts in the conditioner first and the shampoo. Bravik Valera, he doesn't use anything. He just thinks the water cleans him. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I had a couple grease jokes going through. I think I, I need to move on from Bravik Valera. G- right. Great, great question. Great question from Bubak. Let's move on to our dude Amato. Hey, what's up, fellas? It's Amato in California. I uh, wanted to see what your thoughts are on Madison Bumgarner. Um, I have a feeling that we might be passing on Cole and Strasburg, and we might be going for one of those Tier 2 um, pitchers, uh, you know, that are available for agents, or is he not available anymore? You know, I think that the Yankees are probably going to look at Wheeler, but 
maybe the money's going to be too much too. I have a feeling they're going to go with um, uh, the experience in the postseason and the less years obligated. And I think with Bumgarner's age, um, uh, we won't have to give him as many years. Wouldn't be surprised if that's the direction we go. I'm rooting for a big lump of coal in my Christmas stocking. I want some Garrett coal, but I have a feeling we're going to be going the bum garner direction. What do you guys think? Thanks, Amato. I want the coal too. Uh, I have no interest in Mad Bum, dude. He's yeah. got so many innings on his arm. I know that he's only 30 years old, but he's got the arm of a 36 year old. And when you have that many innings, you decline fast. He hasn't pitched a full season in a couple years now, right? Last year, Mad Bum last pitched year. a full year. The two before yeah. that, he didn't. Two before that. So last year, he did. I think his fastball was actually good last year. But, I mean, he's got he's below average with exit velocities. Hard hit rate's bad. Um, the X slugging is bad. His fastball's good, and his curve is good. But, like, nothing – I don't know, man. Um does he slot above Severino, Paxton, or Tanaka? Or is he just more of the same? I mean, it it feels like more of the same. And uh, I'll say this because I, I think this is just as honest as it gets. If we don't get Cole Strasburg, and Wheeler shouldn't be lumped with them, by the way. Wheeler's a nice piece, but he, he shouldn't be lumped with them. Um, I mean, if we don't get one of them... We're going to end up talking ourselves into the other guy, whether it's Ryu, Wheeler, Mad Bum. Um, there's a couple other guys out there. I'm a fucking idiot. It just doesn't feel... It just doesn't feel impactful. And, and, and maybe that's offbeat, and maybe someone like Ryu has kind of crazy stats outside of his injury history. So, you know, if that's the guy, I you, you could talk yourself into that pretty easily, but... Right now, my big thing is, and I I think I just did it five seconds ago, but um, if you can slot in a Colin Strasburg and have uh, Sevy, Paxton, Tanaka as your potential two, three, four starters, I mean, that's insane. Right now, they're a quality one, two, three. I mean, if you can push them back a slot with one of those other guys, it just feels so impactful and so dominant. And... Again, injuries are going to strike this season, but man, if those four guys are pitching back to back to back to back, I just had to do that with my fingers. Like, you're going to win a lot of series. You're going to have a lot of winning streaks. I know you're a big pitching's contagious guy. So, uh, I don't know. We're we're going to talk ourselves into anyone who signs. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's a fact. Yeah. yeah his, so, his, his like ERA it was 3-9 last year. I don't know, man. NL West is the easiest division to pitch in. AL East is the hardest. I mean, just ballpark factor. DH comes into the mix. It, it, I don't know. I just It doesn't do anything for me. Now, if they sign them, I'll have to figure out how to get into it. But right now, Mad Bum doesn't do anything for me. Doesn't excite me. Yeah, it just it it feels like even I'm I mean the appeal and why guys like Zach Wheeler and Corbin are getting paid it's because what can they do? It's not what have you done where in past years Madison, you know, Madison Bumgarner would've been like, "Oh, this World Series hero's available." And it's like, "No, his arm's going to run out of steam soon." So, I I don't know. Just get Kohler Strasburg. Ah! What's up, guys? It's Dustin from Indiana. I was going over I was going over some off-season additions the Yankees might consider, and I came across the idea of uh, Whit Merrifield of the Royals. He's got about, I think, three years left on his contract. Obviously, we know he hits over 300. He steals a lot of bags, and he can play almost anywhere across the field. I was just curious if you guys think he'll even be considered as a target, basically speaking, if Didi doesn't re-sign to – have they ultimately solidified the, the Yankees lineup in addition to what we already have, or if it'll just make things too complicated in the everyday lineup. But then you got to factor in how much we give in return, et cetera. But I don't know. I just wanted to get an idea, and I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts. Thanks, guys. Whit Merrifield. Dude, I think he's, like, owed good money, though. It looks like uh, he's 30 years old. 
Next year, he's making $5 million, then $6.7 million, then two point seven, then six point five. So, I mean, there's there's 16 mil to be accounted for or more. Uh, I, I mean, he's getting paid. I, I think it's actually a pretty good contract for what Whit Merrifield's put together the past two years. Yeah, but would the Yankees take that on? And then what's the move there? Does that mean he plays second and voids out? Like it just, it just does he become the roaming Wade? Uh, like the the proven Wade? Is that what he is? I I mean he he's got some versatility. He's he's played and wait, what would the Yankees su- give up to get him? Yeah, I think I think that's the bigger factor because Whit Merrifield is a good ball player. The Yankees would find a spot on the team, and he he could play second base. He could play outfield. He's even uh, dabbled at a couple a couple other positions in in very limited limited time. But Whit Merrifield is an all star level second baseman. <laughs> that uh, if the Royals move, they they'd ask for a lot, and it just. I, I think what you stumbled into, uh, there's no need. It's not like, ah. And the we Yankees don't have Merrifield. a lot to give. <laughs> yeah. Like, the Yankees don't have a package that can go get you a guy with four years. I think you'd be surprised. I, I think you're down on, Unless, like, you're not too high, high on Davey Garcia. Davey Garcia is a pretty well respected pitching prospect. That's one guy. Yeah. And I mean, the, the other dudes, I mean, they nah. can hit Miguel. Miguel Andujar had a pretty special year. He's, it, he doesn't have no value. It's just not high value. You're not going to trade four years of Whit Merrifield for four years of Andujar. No, but you could put together a package. I, it's it's That's exactly what we're saying, a package. Davey Garcia. Um, I don't think they can. I mean, unless the Royals really just want to shed money, that's their ultimate goal. It, it, the bigger thing is they, they don't want Whit Merrifield. They don't need him. Okay. Well, speaking of second baseman, all-star second baseman. Hey, fellas. This is Patrick from Fairfield, Connecticut. I wanted to know what you thought about signing LeMahieu to a few-year deal. Um, based on current free agent trends right now, he's around the age of 31, and I don't think he's going to be able to get a long-term deal from other teams once he's done with his contract after next year. So I was thinking what you thought about uh, Cash and May putting a deal down for him for a few more years, and we can lock him up at second base for a while. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. It's interesting. He's got one more deal left. Do they want to extend him? Moustakis is 30, and he just signed a four-year deal. So, like, I think a four-year deal is out there for DJ easily. It's kind of crazy he only signed a two-year deal, huh? Free agency has changed in a year. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty wild. And, yeah, I, I mean, Moustakis, like you said, got a four-year to play second base, and he's a very limited second baseman. Um, I don't know. If if you're DJ LeMahieu, I think you're saying, hey, I'm going to rake for another year. Or <laughs> DJ LeMahieu doesn't care. Let me start over. If you're DJ LeMahieu's agent, you're saying, DJ's going to rake for another year. We'll get one last big payday and call it. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea if if Cash is even throwing the bone out there. Maybe maybe DJ and his wife love it in New York. I don't. There's so many factors there. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it doesn't even seem. You don't need to do this right now, unless DJ comes to you and his agent comes to you, like saying, "Hey, we want to try and do this." Then you can entertain it. But like, I, I'd be happy if they lock DJ up. I don't think he's going to diminish or in anything. Like his style of play is pretty simple. Yeah. So. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah, and he he also uh, he had a special year last year. Like I I don't want to be the bad guy, but there's a good chance DJ LeMay who's not going to have the year he had last year. He was crazy good. <laughs> I have a voicemail here. I read what producer Luke wrote it as, and I don't even want to play it. But I'll play. I was it. wondering what was stressing you out over there. You started doing the face stuff. It's just Jake John Boy. Quick question for you. Would you trade Aaron Judge for Garrett Cole? You know, I'm, last year I bought. Go ahead. To free agency? Who are we trading with? I don't know. Would you do it? Yeah. That's just tough. Should have just skipped it? Good trade. 
What's going on, John Boy? Um, I know it's not very healthy for me to be looking into your Twitter mentions, but, you know, besides the, like, stupid normal Astros fans, I was really surprised to see a couple of fucking check marks just spewing some bullshit. So I wanted to know what you think of that, if you've heard from any other media people who have, like, any takes on what these people are saying or just, like, how you wrap your hand or head around an actual reporter saying something so dumb. And, yeah, I'm talking about, like... I don't know, Pat B stats and all those other idiots on Houston Twitter, but, you know, stay strong, my buddy. Hey, from one James from Manhattan to another James from Manhattan, I appreciate that. And if anyone's in the weeds, yeah, last week there was Houston fans mad at me, fine, because I was finding videos that matched the reports. And then a bunch of, like a handful of, or three Houston radio announcers just started quote tweeting everything about me so that they can get their audience to be mad. There's one that one dude, Pat, whatever his name is. I don't know who he is. He's got an anonymous Twitter, but I think he's a radio host. I offered him. I said, Hey, let's, let's have a phone call or go on a podcast. Cause what you're doing right now just sucks. And I haven't, I don't think he's talked about me since I said that. So it wasn't fun. Jake saw it. Uh, not fun. Don't, Don't get blind it. by the blue check mark. Blue blue check marks are nice, but end of the day, they don't really mean shit. Oh uh, yeah, but I mean more so like he's like an actual reporter. Like these guys were like a Sports Illustrated reporter, and that guy's a talk show host. It's just like whoa. Yeah. The problem was like, dude, I posted that Brady video yesterday, and I had people like, "Haha, this is what you have to do now," and it's like, no dumbasses this is what i've done for two years now the astros thing is just one video so annoying people are dumb a person can be smart but people are dumb yep men in black yo what's up guys this is uh sean from Boca raton okay apparently the astros cheated by using a camera in center field to steal signs during the 2017 season all right I'm a huge Yankee fan, but can we please, please not go there? Let's talk about 2017 ALCS. Did a little camera make the Yankees only score three runs in four games at Minute Maid Park? Did a little camera make Gary Sanchez drop a ball that led to us losing game two? Did a little camera make Verlander and Morton pitch like aces during that series? No. The Astros won that series with their camera, and they would have won it without it, too. Um, so they were just a better, more complete team. So let's stop making excuses and give them the respect they deserve. And I'm not accusing y'all of promoting this narrative in particular. I just Shut crap. up! Dude, Sean, if they fucking cheated and they knew exactly what pitch was coming and then they beat the Yankees because they had that to their advantage and the Yankees didn't, who cares about the other shit? It was a pretty fucking close series. Yeah, Verlander dominated the lineup that had Chase Headley as our DH and Sterling Castro and Todd Frazier and all those other people. But shut up if you're like, take... Dude, if they had the pitches, if they knew what pitch was coming before it was thrown, you're going to tell me not to act like that's an advantage for the Astros? Shut up. Listen. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty stoked that a Houston fan found the call in line, and yeah, to- Tommy Canely got roughed up in that game. Tommy Canely, two pitch pitcher. Hmm. 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 Hey guys, great season, great show. Um, listen, you guys got to focus your attention on the real issues here, not the Astros. It's the Red Sox. You know they're doing the exact same thing. Alex scores the manager. Focus your, all of your hate and all of your investigation skills on. Hey, James and Jake. I know this is probably like the 20th Astros question that you've gotten. So, Luke, feel free to filter this one out. But my question, I guess it's kind of twofold. Um, basically, the Astros are still doing this right they've just gotten smarter about it like they're not banging a trash can anymore but they're uh well i guess using a band-aid thing and then also i mean the red sox are totally doing this too right because core is over there and he was a big part of this how many teams do you think are doing this and could the yankees be doing this i really hope not so yeah 
I guess those are my questions. Also, Jimmy, congrats on going all these other shows. You look super comfortable up there, and uh, it's cool to see it. All right? Hmm. This is Pete from Tennessee. See ya. Tennessee, not that big of an accent, but thanks for calling in, Pete. I love it. Um, Jimmy, mother may I? Yeah, yeah. Before any of you get high and mighty about the Red Sox stuff, because Core is their manager, the other guy that was linked on this is Carlos Beltran, who was with the Yankees for the last year. He wasn't the manager, but he was with the team. So if you're going to start pointing and shooting at the Red Sox, they're going to point and shoot right back. So let's wait for the facts on some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, the quote from Cora. The quote from Cora is very interesting. When in the London series, when Cora said like, "Best free agent acquisition the Yankees got was Beltran. He's uh, pretty good at picking up on things." And then he winked. It's like that's yeah. fucking weird. And then he says, "I'm not talking about devices." <laughs> like what, Cora? The fuck? Nobody so, asked, man. Yeah. Um. I, I don't I don't know anything, guys, like officially. Um, I have a lot of stuff that comes my way, and I have to figure out, like, who's telling me this, why they're telling me this, blah, blah, blah. But f- from what I gather, um, the Astros, what they set up, the rumors are that they moved on from the banging, and then they went to the, the, ba- the buzzing Band-Aids or the bullpen coach with an earpiece or the whistles, and they, they, they moved the, they advanced the relay system, but they kept the camera going. That's the thought. I, I believe that they probably did that just personally because why, if you win the World Series via cheating, would you suddenly grow moral conscious? Especially when I think they truly believed every team was doing this. Uh, on Talking uh, Baseball, we have Trevor Plouffe on tomorrow's episode or Wednesday's episode, so a little teaser He's, he says, I played for five organizations. Nothing of this sort was even close to happening. Even close to happening. Uh, and we've heard that a lot. And we think it was really this top-down uh, executive-run thing that the Astros put in place with Cora and Beltran, part of it, and and Cora took it places, and they kind of took it places, but maybe they didn't have the infrastructure to really do it to that extent. I'm sure teams have tried to do stuff with cameras before. There's a lot of technology and stuff like that. But, uh, and we'll see what the investigation says. But to me, it seems like that no one was doing it to the extent that which the Astros are accused of doing it. Yeah, we we don't know what evolved after the trash can. Um, we're assuming it's something, and, and you're right. I mean, if you, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of a good movie comparison of when you, you cross that moral compass. It's it, there's like no coming back, and <laughs> they they clearly cross that. Um, so it's kind of to what degree and what can we find out, and are <laughs> our players gonna snitch? I I mean it's it's gone quiet for a, a week or two now. It's gonna be interesting to see when it picks back up. Yep. All right. Next. What's up, fellas? Tom in Baltimore. First time, long time. Jake, you suck. Sorry, no, sorry. Um, wondering where you guys would rank the Ellsbury move in list of, you know, I guess major deals that have gone sour for the Yanks. And just a general question about where the hell is Ellsbury? All right, I'll hang up and listen. Take it easy, guys. Ellsbury's playing golf in Arizona or something like that. Is Ellsbury is one of the worst contracts in Yankee history, I think. I mean, you got uh, Pavano, Kevin Brown. Dude, I know Kiyagawa wasn't that much money, but he really is one of the worst signings. Like, he wasn't highly thought of in Japan. That was like them just trying to get the next phenom and throwing money. He wasn't highly thought of in Japan. They brought him over the first bullpen session. The catcher goes, this guy sucks. Yeah. And then he sucked, dude. Uh, Kiyagawa, he started 13 games. Jake. They paid him $20 yeah. million. Dollars. He started 13 games. Uh, I know Pavano's money was more, but like Pavano like played a little bit. He, had, he, he started 13 games to a 6-6-6 ERA. 
He was awful. Um, dude, you know what's another one I ran into? Uh, Pasqual Perez. The Yankees signed him, and he got, like, injured, then rehab, or then suspended for drugs, and he never really played for the Yankees. Yeah, I'm I'm trending towards Pavano. Um, 26 starts to the tune of a 5 ERA, and I think he got, what was it, four years, 44 mil, something like that. Um, but yeah, Ellsbury's still worse a, than that, right? I think so. Um, I mean, yeah, I, the, the fact that it limited them after, and I mean, I, I guess know what, know what the bitch of the Ellsbury contract is we knew it was going to be bad going in like we Pavano came off a, a really good season and he was a local guy and it's like hey he figured it out no he just wasn't healthy and he was bad Kevin Brown was old when we got him um Ellsbury we knew coming in he really only had one good season and he was already injury prone so we knew it wasn't going to end well. We were looking for a stopgap band-aid fix to kind of get the Yankees back on track, and now look where we are. Yeah. It was just bad from the start. We knew it. I think people within the organization knew that about Agawa too. But every no one, no one, no one in America knew who he was. I'll tell you this. I, yeah, had, a, Agawa, I had my family like, friend. Randine and I was getting a haircut. She gave me my haircuts and they would get Yankee magazine and the Yankee magazine came out and it was Kiyagawa on the cover and he had sunglasses on and kind of like long hair. And she goes, he's going to fucking suck wearing sunglasses on the magazine cover. Who the fuck is this guy? She was right. Randine was all over it. <laughs> all over it. You wear sunglasses on your magazine cover. <laughs> Good call. Oh, I love Suzanne. What's Hi, up? boys. It's Suzanne from the D.C. area. Still riding high after being around all the Nats fans that were celebrating the World Series win. But I promised I was going to call in with an off-season question, and so here it is. Reggie Jackson is known as Mr. October. Derek Jeter is known as Mr. November. But this time of year, people are usually getting their calendars for the following year. Which Yankees would you put as Mr. January or Mr. February. Not really based on anything they're doing, but more so who you think would fit. I think with Gardy's bald head, he could totally be a sexy New Year's baby. Tell me what you think. All right, bye. Are we just are we just matching players to the the month? It feels like we're going players in month there. Um Well, I'm I'm giving Tanaka Mr. February because February is my birthday month. February's uh, Valentine's Day. It's cold. You ever seen Tanaka in a pea coat? It looks great. So I'm yeah. going Tanaka, Mr. February. Mm. This uh, Suzanne, a great call. Um, <laughs> I I think uh, Jay Happ. We'll we'll see if he makes it through the off season. He's making a run at Mr. September. His September Yankee numbers great. Um, God. Mr. November, we got Jeter. Mr. December, like I would go CC. Like CC's kind of got Santa Claus vibes, right? Um, you know who's Mr. February? Tyler Wade. He's Mr. March. Yeah, okay, he is Mr. March. Him Dude, and, I, him I, I am. I think I've said this every single episode. Yeah, I'm so excited for Tyler Wade to rake in spring again. <laughs> And no one's going to care at all. I'm bought in. I'm lost in the sauce. <laughs> That's because you like you, you, we saw him and he was cool. It's cool. We look alike. It's whatever. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I kind of am too. I was so out. Like at this point with Tyler Wade, it's like it's. He's the 26 man, right? It's the movie scene. Where someone, or no, it's it's the George Costanza gift. It's it's the throw the hands in the air and go. Let's get nuts. Let's 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 once and for all try this Tyler Wade thing and see if it fucking works. Tyler Wade and Clint are still on the team. Uh, come spring, Tyler Wade gets a twenty six man spot. 
Talkman gets the fourth outfielder. Clint starts the year in AAA. Is Clint, like, go liar, liar himself in the bathroom? I have no idea what's spinning between those those red curls. Is there a chance Clint Frazier starts in AAA? Absolutely. Jake, that's uh I mean that's we're getting in dangerous territory. If that Go happens on. again. It's getting old. Um I mean Mike Talkman, Luke Voigt, it's it's not the end. It's not the end, but yeah, it's a little different. He's all right with the twig. Yeah, Talkman didn't debut to twenty six. Voight didn't debut to like what, twenty eight? Twenty six. So Clint's already got them there, but I don't know. I just think like you need a fresh start if that's the path that's laid out for you with the Yankees. If Wade's a twenty six man and Talkman's the fourth outfielder and Clint's there in case someone gets hurt. I, I'm sure they're trying to shop him to see what they can get, but like, might be just better to for, part ways and give him a shot somewhere else. Yeah, I I would not be shocked if he's a part of a trade. I would not be shocked if he breaks camp with the team. I would not be shocked if he starts the season in AAA. It's crazy. All right, here he That's is. That's analysis, people. That is analysis. That's analysis. Analysis, Jake. We got two two calls on the same thing. Trade talk. Hey guys, it's James Esposito from Sarah PA. My question for you guys is, do you think after Cashman came out about teams being interested in Anduhar, that you trade him away for other prospects or pitching, or to even lessen the salary to get guys like Cole or Strasburg? Or do you see him as a viable asset in the team? I personally don't know how he will fit into the infield. So uh, thank you, and uh, hashtag verify John Boy. Hey guys, Nick from Santa Barbara. First of all, Jake, I appreciate the recommendation for food you gave me in Denver. It's really good. Thanks for that. Uh, I'm actually here to talk about the hot boy corner, third base. Um, what do you think Geo's standing is going to be going in? Do you think there, do you think there's going to be a spring training battle with Andujar? I mean, I don't think his trade value is very good right now, and you know Brian Cashman doesn't like trading away assets like that. Do you think they're going to bring in an outside source, or do you think it's going to be Geo's the whole way? Let me let me know. Thanks, guys. <sighs> Jake, do you think they should try to sell Anduar? I tell you what, the Yankees think they should try to sell Anduar. So the the Yankees are trying to sell Anduar for the two ninety five thirty home run Anduar, <laughs> and I don't think teams are paying that. Um, yeah. I've I've come to grips with this weird like Edwin Encarnacion was a huge part of the team last year. He was a DH in first base. Why can't Miguel Andujar be that role with DH slash first base slash third base in case of emergency? Like I I I I have pretty high hopes for Andujar. That boy can hit if those juice balls are back and a couple of those doubles are homers. I think he could find a role on this team. But Jake, what if you like what if you shop Anduhar around, right? And say there is a place that is willing to take him for a MLB ready good caliber relief pitcher, right? Because if Dellen's gone, just say, what was that guy from the Rangers? Wade LeClerc. Okay. And then you can go sign someone to be the utility infield guy that roams around and depth and replacement. Excuse me, Jose LeClerc. It's Wade LeBlanc. <laughs> those are those are fun last names. <sighs> what if like you Dude, pick up Jonathan Villar from the Orioles to be your all over infield guy with stick? What if you trade Andy Hart to the Brewers for Josh Hader? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shave that beard, 
Get some racist tweets from Red Sox fans. Racist tweets about Josh, excuse me. Um, it turns into, it's my, it's my end of my free agent pitching spiel. However this ends with Andujar, we're going to talk ourselves into it. I still think Miguel Andujar's bat is so good, he can be an everyday DH for a lot of baseball teams. And a lot more baseball teams might have the DH in like 2021, 2022. If I'm Miguel Andujar, I'm biding my time till then. Um, but I, I don't know. There's just going to be something that feels wrong with me. If he, if we're just punting on a potential team controlled 300 hitter with 30 home run power, when, yeah, I mean, his, his defense at third base is very suspect. We've seen a lot of third basemen go over to first and play first. Can he do that? I don't know. Um, is there another position? Could he play left field at somewhere that's, that's not Yankee Stadium? Maybe. Um, but not a lot of people can hit like that dude hit. Um, so I just don't know. I'm, if it's an impact reliever, I'll talk myself into it. Cause there will be like a release. Like we'll have like a, <laughs> we don't have to worry about the Anahar question anymore. But at the same time, like he's a super talented dude. Isn't it the same injury that bird bird had the shoulder? Yeah. Labrum or something. I thought it was somebody else on the team that had it. Maybe it was Bird. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Andujar. He can hit. Those doubles are fun. It's just like I can't go back to him at third after watching Geo for the year. I can't do it. Yeah. And I uh, I mean, I, I put up a little of fight for hoping he'd get better. But, yeah, man, I, I we just – 297 batting average, 855 OPS as a rookie, 27 homers, 92 RBIs, and like that, things project upwards for him. <laughs> so I don't know. That's just a really that's a really talented bat to be like. I don't think they do project upwards. I think the the analytics say he get, he was lucky with a lot of his hits because he doesn't walk a lot. Well, I, uh, I think he did better power. than ex- I think he did. I think his results are better than expectations in 2018. No, I'm saying walk in power or I, whatever you want to call it, being able to draw walks. Those are things that come with age. Um, and I mean, those doubles normally translate to homers later in your career. The on base percentage ticks upwards. I I just don't. I think if the Yankees are trading Miguel Andujar, they're pitching him as like. <laughs> a main piece of a trade and I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Be interesting to see. They're definitely trying. Rangers seem interested. So they just got uh, Gibson and him and Anduhar are real close. So, oh my God. Yeah. They holiday together. I mean, Jim, if you're just the pirates, like give us Josh Bell. Here's Voight, Anduhar, um, and one of the weird 40-man pitchers we projected. In, enjoy. What? I don't want to do that. Okay. I like Voight. Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks. This is Josh from Brick. A question for you guys. Um, watching Rookie of the Year right now, and I'm curious what you guys would think. Who would be the best fit as a fake sports movie character on the 2020 Yankees? I think it's going to be – I think personally it would be Henry Rowan Gardner. It might be because I'm watching Rookie of the Year right now. Might be. I want to get your guys' opinion on it. All right, love you guys. And Jake <laughs> doesn't suck. Slight uh, lean. Slight lean that it might be Rowan Gardner because you're watching that. Um, dude, you know who the Yankees could really fucking use? Who's that, Jim? Steve Nebraska? Yeah, he'd be good. I mean, he he's, an, he's an ace right there, and he can DH if you need him to. Yeah. And he's already been a Yankee, so give me Steve Nebraska. Okay, that's pretty good. Thank um, you. Or Lou Collins. He can play first base, really give Void a run for his money. Could I take Babe Ruth from the Sandlot? And just no, he, he can no. pitch and hit? Oh, no. We're just going to put a ghost on the field? We already have Babe <laughs> yeah. Ruth's ghost on the field. 
It's, That's it's an her, advantage. He's already there. Give me two Babe Ruth ghosts. Illegal. Illegal. Yeah, I, that's in the rules. That's my bad. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Give me the bad, the the bad guy that Rowan Gardner strikes out that he like wins the MVP awards and stuff. That like really mean guy. Yeah. Okay. What about Slot Benny him the at Jet? First. What about Benny the Jet. He can play center field, steal some bags. Speed's kind of out. He'd be a utility guy. I mean, Tyler Wade's our Benny the Jet. He is, but his yeah. name is actually Tyler the Bat. Excuse me? Excuse you. Good, Thank good, you. Good cue, Josh. Hi, this is Eric calling from Clarksburg, West Virginia. Twitter handle is the post 15. Have a set of thought. Chad Green went back to the old role where he'd have a set day and pitch two innings. I was wondering if they could do that with uh, Johnny Lasagna and maybe have a one-two punch there where we know we're going to have guys for a couple innings in middle relief. Um, thanks for everything you do. Have a good one. Thank you, Eric, from West Virginia. Johnny Lasagna, Jake, I'd get one more year to be a starter. I think that's the formula here. Uh, new pitching coach, new regime. Um, he got rushed a lot. Uh, I think he's going to be a good reliever. I think in the end he will be a good reliever. But do you think they give him one more shot as a starter? I mean, we need more starters. If they don't make a move, he's got to be our sixth starter. I mean, absolutely. We're we're keeping him as a starter for another year. I mean, this the whole Johnny Lasagna thing was A, rush due to 40-man stuff, if we remember that. Um, B, the arm is super talented. And I, I don't know. He He's going to be one of the most fascinating players to watch at this spring training. I mean, I'm I'm hoping to see... What I saw from Domingo Herman last year that he just looks he looks more like a pro and he's more under control. Um, Johnny Lasagna, man, there there's another guy that we talked about trade packages before. If the Yankees are making some sort of move, I mean, if you put Johnny Lasagna, Davy Garcia, and Andujar or Frazier, something like that, you're starting to put a trade package together. I think the Yankees are going to keep him. I think worst case, you keep them keep him stretched out in Triple A. Um, and you call him up when he's needed. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see if he does start to struggle in a starting pitching role, if he does evolve into this two-inning, three-inning uh, kind of power reliever because he can be impactful in that role. But I, it's it's way too early to, pump, to, to punt on Johnny Lasagna, the starting pitcher. Um, he just turned 25 November 2nd. Happy late birthday, Johnny. Happy late birthday, um, Johnny. He's got 56 major league innings. It's it's tough to make a, a judgment on that. Um, eight starts in the majors. And I don't think he has a ton of minor league experience. Remember when we did this when he first got called up? Like he is he is an outlier of all outliers. He has 15 career innings at triple A. <laughs> um he's got 36 career innings at double A. Like his experience level is very low for the type of pitchers that normally get opportunities with the Yankees. We need to, I think we need to take a step back on Johnny Lasagna and be like, wow, he really doesn't have much experience at all. Yeah. And he's got a cool name and electric yeah. arm. When his stuff is right, man, it looks so cool. It looks as good as you do bad. Okay. Fair. <laughs> legal. That's fair. Uh, that's legal. <laughs> legal. It's legal. I just saw River Out Blues tweet this out. Do you think Mustak is going to the Reds means they're out on the DD? Escapades. No. Okay. Hard no. no. They uh I, I think the Reds are kind of all in for this year and shortstop is still their weak spot. Um uh, I'll I'll say no for now. Okay, he says no. Next up, Spencer. This is the last voicemail of the day. Hey, Jimmy and Jake, what's going on? It's Spencer from Midtown. Uh, Jimmy, this one's for you. Welcome to New York City. I uh, hope you're enjoying the town, settling in nicely. Just wanted to know if you wanted to go grab some Indian food in the city sometime. I know you're still looking for some good spots. I uh, know you're a fan of the cuisine. Want to go grab some Indian food, some chicken tikka, shoot the shit, talk yanks. Let me know. I'll be listening. Take care. Wow. What a nice offer. I think this is Spencer, might be the Spencer I met at uh, Dan Zlotnick, who sings the theme songs, show. 
if that's you huh. or if it's another Spencer, yeah, uh, got to get some Indian food. Try in every Indian food spot in the city, Jake. That delivers to us. We've had three so far. Get some, get some this week. I haven't seen your your Indian food notepad out soon. Yeah, because we've been gone, and like now we're trying Doing to too eat too much shit. Trying to eat a little healthier. Um, I'm cooking dinner tonight as soon as I get done with this. But yeah, Indian food, man. Uh, Katie really likes Gobi Mancheri, Gobi Manchurian. So Spencer, find a place that has Gobi Manchurian, and we're there. Okay. I had. I Have had you ever had funny... someone call in, ask you out on a date? No, 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 no. no. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Um, s- someone called in earlier this show and they said they they liked my Denver food recommendation. So a lick a cut. Uh, B, Ooh. you'll like this. So we're 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 Thai food people. Yeah. Um, if you're not a Thai food person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're. You're blowing it. You're blowing You're it. You're so dumb. Okay, so yeah, what you do? Uh, I found a place. I accidentally hit the wrong button one time we were ordering, and I got fried noodles, um, okay. and they were really good. Um, they were kind of like drunken noodles, just fried a little bit. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. So we were like, hey, let's go to this other Thai place. Um, so we, we ordered, and I got Thai noodles. And Jim, you would I think you would have laughed your butt off. We we got it delivered. They gave me like all the good stuff, like the beef, the vegetables, the sauce. It was in a jar, and they gave me this like pizza dough of like dried, almost uncooked ramen noodles, and I just poured it on top. But I had no idea what I was doing, and I don't know. It it seemed like a prank. Oh, that's like when you go eat to a Korean restaurant. That. That shit's a prank. They like hand you the menu and it's like coded, and then you order one thing and you're not sure what happened. And then yeah. they bring out twenty appetizers and you're like, well, "Did I order this?" They're like, "No, this is just complimentary." And you're like, "This is the complimentary like bread at a Korean yeah. place? Just twenty dishes? It's it feels like you're on a game show and people are watching you for your reactions." All right. So that wraps up talking Yanks. Thank you guys very much for listening. We appreciate it. We love you. We will be back on Friday. Tuesdays and Fridays. Is that what we've been doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll try and get some yeah, guests. Yeah, we'll figure that out. We're going to be going to winter meetings soon, so we'll try and talk with all our friends out there, bring you guys some content, follow along. We appreciate it. We'll see you later. Go Yanks. Tell them, Gramps. Go Yankees.